Hello, this is Frank Falvey with Frank Presents, and we have a slightly different format today. I have a wonderful co-host, Steve Sherlock with Franklin Matters, and Dave McNeil, welcome. Thank you. And uh, you're going to be a second term a school committee member. That's correct. Uh, tell us a little about yourself, Dave. Oh, well, yeah, thank you very much for asking. So. Uh, first off, I grew up here in Franklin, so I've spent most of my life here. Graduated Franklin High in 2009 and moved back to Franklin uh, around 20, you know, it was in 2017. Um, so, you know, just from how I was raised, was raised to value public service. And when I moved back here and kind of got my footing in terms of finding, um, finding a position, I wanted to get involved in the town. Um, where at, so for my day job, I work at the State House and I've had been very fortunate to have a number of different roles there and you know policy is of course one of the key um, components of all the different roles I've had there so um, having a mind for policy and applying that on the day-to-day -day, um, at the state level and across a number of different subject areas has been something that's been very excited for me to get that experience towards and getting involved in state government you know really made me interested in getting involved locally as well so you know, since moving back of I had the opportunity to get involved in a number of different capacities in town. I'm a board member of the Franklin Education Foundation. I serve on the Community Preservation Committee, and I am a school committee member as well. I have been serving, I'm wrapping up my first term now, so you know, I've been serving for the past two years, and looking forward to the second year right now. So I, yeah, I've been you know, very fortunate and you know, blessed to be a member of this community, and I you know, want to continue to you know, pay it forward. and. I use my experience and perspectives to continue to serve the people of Franklin. And picking up on that, you already mentioned kind of public service, both on the school committee that you're doing locally, mm -hmm. CPA, et cetera, and then working at the state. You understand those pieces. Speak to the other aspect of that to the extent that as part of the engagement, we need to vote. Uh, so, you know, the ownership on the voters to come out on regular elections. Share your views on that piece. Absolutely. So there's the uh, the quote from the show The West Wing that I absolutely love, decisions are made by those who show up. And uh, it's always stuck with me ever since I've, I've seen that show, and it's so true. Um, you, know, you, can, you can complain and complain and complain all you want, but if you're sitting on the sidelines, then your complaint doesn't really account for much. You know, you know, get in, be active, and you know, an enormous part of that is being informed, being informed about who the decision makers are in your community, what their values are, what their vision is for the community. And if their vision and values align with yours, then please vote for them and support them. And if not, then vote for someone else. But that's, that's so integral and important. The, the, most important. the most important activism anyone can do is vote. And I see that you know, at, at the state level of my job, and I, it's just so, so important locally. Um, we have such a rich um, tradition and history here in Massachusetts of, of local government and I think it's it's wonderful that we still get to participate that to this day. Mm -hmm. Picking up on as well your background you started touching to what specifically are the points across those that you would leverage as you have or potentially will as a school committee member what are those key points that you bring to the table? Yeah absolutely that's a great question so I would say first off is my experience so being uh, being an incumbent school committee member I've had one term's worth of experience in my belt and in terms of learning the different aspects of the position. So you know, what, what goes into the budget, relationships with the superintendent, the different programs that the administration has been trying to integrate and what our vision is for the future. Also getting to know and you know, establish relationships with both my fellow school crew members and also other elected officials and, um, and other, other staff uh, Across across different both school administration and town administration, and um, that is, I mean, I th I think experience is you know probably the most important thing in uh, an elected office position, but also in really any other job position. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go to a job interview, they ask you first what are your qualifications, and they ask you about your experience, and um, I I think right off the bat that's um, that's. One of, one of, if not the most important things I, I bring to the table is my experience in these past two years. And then also my um, other perspectives and skill sets. So as I mentioned, you know, I grew up here in Franklin. I graduated Franklin High in 2009. So I know the impact that my Franklin education had on me and how 
um, that create a direct through line to where I am today in terms of the skills um, that it, you know, it imparted on me and the educational opportunities that it gave me. And so I know what it's like to be a person who's trying to start their career in the modern workforce who came out of the Franklin public school system. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's the perspective I bring. So I you know, also, you know, not only in my service these past two years, but also in, in the coming term, want to pay that forward to the next generation of Franklin students because I know how impactful that was for me. And so I do bring that perspective as well to um, our meetings. And, and as I mentioned as well, my, my policy and, and state government experience, having that perspective and, and that eye for how state policy and state budgets work, it's you know, not directly one for one, but there are a lot of parallels and there's a lot of um, a lot of overlaps there in terms of local. So that's also an experience that I, I bring to the table. And as I mentioned, other um, positions that I've been fortunate enough to hold in town, and I think have also been very valuable in terms of seeing holistically how all the different components of not only the, the school department, but other parts of um, our town government fit together. So yeah, that's uh, all the different, different things that I um, I bring to the table, and I really, you know, look forward to applying those in the coming term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know from you'll recall since it was the past term, you hired a new superintendent. You made a decision, sort of, not to redistrict because you really need to do this other piece. Mm -hmm. So you can speak to that, but then ultimately get to you really have a budget issue. And I know since you've been on the budget committee and then joint budget committee, you can speak to that as well. Exactly, exactly. So um, yeah, first you mentioned our uh, hiring of uh, Lucas Shigir as our superintendent. You know, I, um, I you know, definitely think he was the best person for, for the job and I absolutely 100% um, believe that you know, this past year of him being on the job has, has proven that. Um, and when we talk about experience and, and relationships and knowing Franklin, that's those the most important experience that Lucas brought to the table, and he's shown that he's been able to hit the ground running, and um, you know, we really like not not lose a step at all, and in, in going forward, um, when it comes to redistricting, I, I completely com completely agree with what you're saying. So I um, I believed in not just making any decision, but we want to make informed decisions, and sometimes informed decisions take some time to gather that information, but uh, an informed decision that takes some time is better than a hasty decision that could potentially create repercussions later down the line um, if we had you know, waited to gather some information. So I'm you know, a big believer in, you know, in you know, data-informed decision-making, and that's you know, why I voted to you know, you know, put a pause on redistricting and really say, like, okay, well, let's, um, let's wait and get a, a facilities plan together. Let's map that out and see what, you know, down the line, we do think the best, um, you know, best facilities are going to be and what our needs are going to be given the um, enrollment and demographic trends that we believe are going to be happening here in Franklin down the road and what are the, the buildings and the facility upgrades that will be necessary to um, fulfill those and make sure that the, you know, the student population that we have you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the line are best served by those facilities. And um, you know, your last point, exactly right, the budget situation. So um, certainly it is you know, applicable to the schools, but it's not just the schools. It's a, a townwide, townwide issue. Now, we, um, now on the on the school part of the government, as you're very well aware, had to cut a number of not only um, positions but programs, and you know that's you know it's unfortunate. I really wish we didn't have to do that, but you know the world doesn't exist how we wish it to be. The world <laughs> is what it is. Uh, it's and we have to, we have to, um, you know. You know, play the cards we're dealt, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're trying to make the most fiscally prudent and responsible decisions with the finances that we have, and you know, those decisions, you know, they do have real world consequences for for Franklin families. But that's that is, you know, just how it is for right now. And and again, you now we want to make sure we're providing the best possible educational experience for Franklin families with the funds that we have. You know, so we strive to both balance. Um, from a fiscally prudent standpoint, but while also being aspirational and investing in other things in the future. And you know, that's something that all the other town departments are also dealing with. You know, we happen to be the largest part of the town budget, but it's not an issue that solely you know, falls on our shoulders and impacts us. So um, you're you know, absolutely right. The, you know, the, the shrinking pot, as it were, which you know, the inflation of these past couple of years has only exacerbated that. Um, it has certainly impacted us significantly and will 
and when we'll continue to uh, if nothing is done on that front. And I think one of the nuances within it uh, to elucidate for the listeners, and you can elaborate on because we just talked about it as well, but the facility piece that had been done post the Davis Thayer decision, et cetera, had left out a key piece in terms of the room utilization whereby Franklin certainly is recognized as being a high performing district, uh, having a great special education program. So a lot of people come here for both of those reasons and some of our special ed growth has been seen even though we've got a declining population. The schools, it's one of the undertold stories in terms of success is by educating those students in Franklin, and they can't do all of it, but they can do some of it, saves us a boatload of money. Mm. But that room capacity is not like the 2025. You're going to have, call it four, six, eight, depending upon the nature of the special ed services in a room. And that hadn't been really included in the prior piece, which is what I understand you're now including. Exactly, yeah. And, it, and that's part of why it's so important to take a look at our facilities needs from that holistic standpoint to understand not just you know more um, shall we say uh, traditional models of learning or traditional classroom experiences but also you know special edu special education um, classroom needs as well as other different classrooms that you know might not have the you know maximum you know student population size per classroom in you know, the traditional way that we see that but have their have their own needs and can can balance those also as we need to and um, you're exactly spot on. I think if I remember correctly, you know, it's an it's an average of fifty thousand dollars that we save by being able to provide special education um, services to students in house. And you know, so you know the more you know we invest in that, the the more we save. It's it's actually quite similar to um, on the on the town part of things, you know, being able to invest money into you know our rainy day fund to get that triple A bond rating. Sure. And you know and with that triple A bond rating we're able to save a lot down the road whenever we borrow for capital projects or, or other projects just in interest alone. And so it really is a case of you know the 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 more we invest in, the more we do save in the long term. So there are definitely parallels there. And you're you're absolutely right. But you know, the only way we can make those informed decisions is by taking the time to understand what our needs are, what we project our needs to be, and then making a plan accordingly. Does the continuing education program pay for itself? Um, off the top of my head, I will admit I'm not sure if it does. I would venture to guess it doesn't, oh. but um, I think it's, I think that's still a wonderful example of how we can provide educational services to all, I mean, all different members of our community, not just Franklin student, not just current Franklin students, but also adult members of the community, and and summer programs or just or other alternatives to programming. Um, I think it's wonderful that we have our, our lifelong learning programs and that we can um, have you know people from you know all different walks of life and places learn something else um, in you know, in house in Franklin. So um, yeah, I'll um, I'd have to I'll have to look back into that. So I, I do apologize. I don't know off the top of my head, but um, Dave, I, I Dave. definitely supportive of it. I'm a nuts and bolts person. Mm -hmm. You're in policy. Mm -hmm. Kind of different two sides. How do you how do you weigh policy against cost and what it's producing? Mm. Oh, that's uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, I, I I absolutely agree with that principle, though, because. We want to ensure that ultimately the policies that we are enacting are having real-world benefits to the people that they are impacting, and in this case, it's the Franklin educational community. And there's so, a cost involved in that. Of course, yeah. So how course. do you how do you measure one against the other in making your decisions? Mm -hmm. So um, a significant part of that is taking a look at where our needs are, and I think the administration does an excellent job of that. You know, super, uh, the superintendent of gear. And his team taking a look at where the enrollment trends are going to be the most, taking them for in terms of classroom size, but also which grades are going to need the need the most support. And then taking a look to see which classrooms and which subject areas are going to need more support, or where support can be shifted around a little bit. Then understanding, okay, like well, if you know, position can if we really need positions here, and we're particularly need the um, 
the enrollment supports from what we see, then that's what we want to invest more in. If we see that there's another area that maybe doesn't need as many investments, then that's something that we can take away from. But, I, but again, that goes to the informed decision making um, Dave, aspect Dave, of that. Yeah. Families are going to be moving into a hotel mm -hmm. here in Franklin. Without knowing, I'm going to be suspect that principally they're going to be speaking uh, 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 Hispanic language or Latin, uh, Latin American uh, mm -hmm. language. And they're probably going to need uh, a lot of adult education uh, to learn English, to help them speak English better. What will be your leadership or thinking on that subject? Oh, oh, absolutely. It's, it, it's a very salient topic for not only the, the school part of things, but the entirety of our town government. So, you know, right now I know it's still relatively early on the process mm -hmm. in, terms of, um, in terms of the situation. I, I know the Board of Health is, help, is kind of t spearheading, um, assisting the families in their entirety, but of course we on, this, on uh, Franklin Public Schools are also going to be doing our best to provide for the educational needs of the school-aged children that are, um, that are present. I believe the number was 25 um, as of now that we got, that is of course subject to change and it's still a fluid situation. Um, I know that we've been investing quite a bit in our English as a second language, um, both teachers and resources over these past few years, which I think will be of tremendous benefit to helping out these students. And, and I know we're, there's gonna be other logistical um, you know, needs that will have to be met in terms of transportation and um, you know the classrooms that these students will be will be going to. But you know this is a this will be a process that is going to be continued to be figured out. Um, in terms of lifelong learning, I'm not entirely sure where um, where that will fit in, where the el eligibility will be. But at least for the school age children, you now we are you now committed and obligated to provide those children with um, the educational um, services that that we can and. We do expect a reimbursement from the state to happen you know, down the line, and you know that'll that'll all get sorted out. But you now, while you now while these families are here, we want to make sure that we're as you know welcoming and accommodating them as we can be to be the best neighbors that we can be. Yeah, I think it's one of the pieces. While the school generally is at the forefront in terms of the school age children, from what I understand, talking with our town administrator and health director, for example, the library also reinstituted in the last couple of years an ESL program, English as a second language, and they were soliciting teachers. So that may be another way the town can address that need because clearly it's going to be a need. Um, yeah, I think that was one of the key ties that I wanted to bring back. Um, Seventh and eighth graders mm -hmm. have a choice of three different high schools they can go to. They can go to the Walpole Aggie Agricultural School, which I understand now is maybe in small motors or, or different aspects of it as opposed to straight agricultural. Mm -hmm. They can go to Tri-County, uh, where there are a number of different hands-on programs, or they can go to the uh, Franklin High School, which I gather has both an academic track and a practical uh, vocational track. How do you promote to the parents and to the students their options? Are you really geared in promoting the wide choice that they have and explaining it, or are you trying to focus narrowly on the Franklin High School? Well, you know, as a school crew member for uh, Franklin Public Schools, you know, it's my responsibility to ensure that we're providing the best education in the Franklin Public School system um, that we can. And of course, Franklin High is a part of that. And so that's why you know, I'm very supportive of uh, us expanding the educational offerings that we have, and I've been very encouraged to see what we do offer um, th you know, through the the tour of the schools. You know, see the 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 film studio there, which you know, when when I was there, it was just kind of getting off the ground with a couple um, with a couple cameras. I think were donated from from uh, the, the coincidentally from this from this <laughs> studio here. You know, a back lot in the day, more yeah. than a couple of cameras yeah. Yeah. and edit facilities. It's, it's been great to see not only you know that part of Franklin High with the the film studio that's been 
been added, but also you know the the robotics that's that's been there and other um, other STEM offerings. And mm -hmm. you know if you know if we can make you know, Franklin High School as much of a one stop shop as we can, I mean that's you no know, that that really is the goal because we want to make sure that you know our our students in Franklin are being sent out into the world and being prepared for you know post graduation, whether that be college or or something else. Um, with as you know, as much of a rich variety of experiences and skill sets that we can equip them with. The one other aspect, well, maybe two, but the, the Franklin Arts Academy is another track within the high school. Mm -hmm. I think that at least in the last several years seems to have grown a great deal of attention. I think that helps address your piece as well. Um, and then uh, other than kind of the metrics of the high school graduation rates and then where they're going certainly and I know from a couple of years ago when I had access to the the listing of the schools and other options when you did a pivot and again being respectful of the privacy of the individuals involved it was fascinating to me that there was like 70 schools that had one or more students mm. and 70 schools that had a single student so Franklin was sending people to a diverse set mm. of educational opportunities. That I thought was rather impressive. Yeah. Without actually getting into Tom, Dick, or Harry, yeah. <laughs> it just is like, ooh, that's a cool number. Yeah, it is, it really is. And I think that exactly speaks to what we aspire to offer here, at, at uh, you know, not just at Franklin High, but really all throughout Franklin Public Schools and you know, how we prepare our students as they, can, as they progress through the different grade levels and then ultimately to you know, after high school once they graduate is how are we preparing them for the world post high school and you know, that, that is you know, the priority of us as school crew members and all, as well as the priority of um, our admin team. Hmm. Dave, what would you like me to address to you as a final question? <laughs> that we haven't already asked. <laughs> yeah, uh, we haven't already asked. Um, yeah, well, I, I really, uh, I mean, I appreciate this opportunity to have this conversation. I, I appreciate all your questions, but um, yeah, I would say, you know, what, you know, what are, what's the, the vision that we're, we're looking for, you know, for the future of, you know, of Franklin Public Schools and what do we want to make sure that we continue to provide? And I know, you know, the, the budget, as you mentioned, Steve, is something that keeps getting brought up and, you know, not, you know, not all of that is within our control. The biggest part of that actually isn't in our control in terms of how much you know funds that we do get. And you know, um, ultimately, you know, we're we're doing with that what we can. But I can tell you that we want to do as much as we can with that. We want to be able to expand you know our language programs. We want to be able to expand our STEM offerings. We want to be able to expand our mental health and and social emotional learning supports to provide for that. Um, holistic approach for our Franklin students, and you know our admin is doing you know wonderful work and you know in, in terms of that with expanding our, our the quality of our curriculum, our our data collection, our 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 system to support for our students, and we're always looking ahead to see what else we can what else we can be doing, and we do you know we we do want to see what are what are new positions that we can if we had the funds to bring on board to enhance and enrich. That student experience because it's not no it's not just about you know, the the quantity it's really about the quality and we want to provide the best quality that we can with what we have and um, you now that's you know, that is the vision that you know I, I know I share and my my fellow school community members share and that's you know, really what we want to to offer the, the Franklin educational community. What policy committee would you like to be on next year? <laughs> Well, you know, this this year uh, I've served as the chair of the budget subcommittee. I serve on the policy subcommittee, and I serve on the student wellness advisory um, council as well. Um, and you know, I, I've really enjoyed the, those roles, and you know, we'll see. Um, you know, we'll we'll see what the what the next term brings. But I've really enjoyed my my time on on those subcommittees. David McNeil, candidate for school committee incumbent. Uh, thank you uh, for coming and being with us. And uh, people watching, go get this confused. November 7th is the general election, but October 24th, you're going to go have another uh, vote uh, on the Tri-County. Tri-County, right. But clear up my mind, on the 24th, right, 
Is there is that a two part question? No. One one question: Should we, the Tri County community, build a new school? Build Single a new question. School. Single question. Right. But on the November seventh ballot, there may be a ballot question, question as to well to fund it. And that'll come up through the town council meeting this week as we're recording this. They're going to make that decision. So that we may have October 24th, yes, there should be a school. And then on November 7th, let's fund it. Clearly, from your perspective, we should fund it because if we don't then, and it does get required, then the budget situation you have just gets that much more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, this is Dave McNeil, Steve Sherlock, and Frank Falvey, please, when you go to the polls and you see us, introduce yourselves and say hello. Uh, and we welcome always your comment on programs uh, like this. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.